Hello, Susanna Lopez here, actor turned barrister turned broadcaster turned true crime writer and proud member of Sisters in Crime Australia. Welcome to the Scarlet Stiletto Bites podcast. For over 30 years now, Sisters in Crime Australia has supported our women crime writers, both true crime and fiction, and some criminal literary talent has been unearthed. Among many awards, there's an annual prize for short crime fiction, the Scarlet Stiletto Awards. And for those of you who prefer your stories by ear, in 2023, we commenced this podcast series, Scarlet Stiletto Bites, to celebrate the sisters' 30th anniversary. Each story is short, but not always sweet. Expect Twisted Tales, quirky humour and a frisson of feminism. Please support us by following, sharing, reviewing and generally spreading the word. We have no paywall. Today's short story author is Sarah Evans, who won the 2011 Scarlet Stiletto for Funniest Crime Story. Cock a Hoop by Sarah Evans Supersonic sounds rent the air, shattering sleep-deep silence and exploding a hole in my chest exactly where my heart should be if it hadn't already ejected onto the bedroom floor with shock. Quivering, I lay there. 3 a.m. Another bout of hollering, fit to waken the dead, split the night in two and my heart pulsated on the boards. Bleeding into the cracks. Okay, so I do exaggerate. My heart was still where it should be, but banging about like a jackhammer. Thanks to the jump start on the dawn chorus, such an awakening couldn't be good for my blood pressure. Prone in the dark, I muttered wild curses, waiting. And then it came, the third bracket of crowing demonic bird would have to go. I was sleep deprived like no baby boomer should be. Uh, Unless, of course, one was lucky enough to score a toy boy. These nighttime wake-up calls were too reminiscent of a previous life, two decades and a husband ago. One cluttered with babies, boobs and bottom changes. Nowadays, I enjoyed sleeping through the night, or I had done since being bumped from the marital bed by a much younger model with blonde curls and cupid lips. Since the downgrade, I'd limped to the country, licking my wounds, trying not to howl. Failing the toy boy therapy, I'd bought a sweet rural retreat, complete with lush cottage garden and rescue dog to cheer myself up and inherited a neighbour from hell. Troll Vodka. I don't know her real name because I couldn't understand her. She was a scary old Russian, voluble and cranky with a a rash of chin whiskers to rival a walrus and a gigantic glass mountain of empty Karloff bottles. She made Genghis Khan looked like a Stepford lollipop lady, and she mincemeated anyone who crossed her. To say she terrified the bejesus out of me was an understatement. What with her strident, guttural voice and manic fist-waving, as she cursed me for being a soft city slicker with no idea how country people lived. And she did have a point this far south of the city, and one was in dueling banjo country. If only I could twang a string to keep up my end of the bargain, but the only twanging I was doing was with my out-of-condition muscles, which were unused to hard yakka and knotted at the hint of work. Really, I didn't have a clue how things were done, but I did know that a person was entitled to a decent night's sleep. 
But troll vodkas, foul bird, had other ideas. Ah, the Russian cock. Vlad the Impaler. He of the cruel, hypnotic orange eyes and debaucher of all chooks regardless of gender. He also terrorised my little dog, Siskin, who ran and hid, shivering under my bed every time the impaler crowed and turned his evil eye on our boundary fence. Oh, as for me, I was fair game. The chocolate brown and black Orloff with his hooded eyes, white beard and raspberry pink comb may have resembled a large ice cream sundae, but there was nothing sweet about him. He stalked me like a pro. At every opportunity he'd fly, Exocet missile style with sharp yellow talon slashing and wicked hooked beak at the ready to gouge and devour the delicate flesh from my calves. I obsessed about wringing his neck, using his feathers in a hat fit for Ascot, cooking coq au vin. In fact, I think I hated him even more than my ex, which was saying something. Later that morning, I dragged myself out of bed and cranked up the espresso machine. The phone rang while I was downing my third cup. It was some kindly CWA soul reminding me of the strong rural women's expo meeting, which I'd conveniently forgotten. With no ready excuse and caffeine jitterbugging through my system, I tripped into a cavernous hall in the middle of town an hour later. The hall was a treat, with the ceiling slung low like a pair of grandma's old sluggers, paint the colour of faded nicotine peeled off the walls like terminal dandruff, drifting into corners already clogged with ancient mummified insects. The aroma of mortine vied for supremacy with hot sausage rolls and the sound of a hundred chattering women was reminiscent of landfill seagulls. Oh boy, was this going to be good or what? If I hadn't drank so much coffee I could have settled down for some shut-eye catching up on my weeks of cock-broken slumber. But I was too hyper, my eyes wide open, wide, as only a caffeine overdose can achieve. I was awake for the duration. Great. I blinked a sunlight laser beam through the high sash windows. Dust motes clogged the shafts. I half-heartedly listened to the speakers. Then jackknifed to attention as the stories unfolded, experiencing a, a mortifying pang of shame. Oh boy, this was good stuff. And what? These tough, resilient women had overcome huge physical, mental and financial adversities. And here was I stressing over a stupid crowing bird just because I needed sleep. What was I like? <laughs> Letting a rooster rule the roost? Amazing, said the woman next to me. These women are so inspirational. You bet, I said and introduced myself. Once the meeting finished, my new friend, Jess, a couple of other hail ladies well met, and myself ducked into the local tavern and inhaled a couple of bottles of Chablis in rapid succession. When we cracked the third, I told them about Vlad. Ah, oh, you can't put up with that torture, said Jess. It's not humane. Us women have rights, as demonstrated today. We don't have to put up with bolshy bully boy tactics. Remember, we are strong, rural women. So, cackling merrily, we hatched a cunning plan over our crispy chicken croquettes. A while on, and the four of us scoped out the vodka establishment. All was quiet, except for our giggling. Troll vodka must have been out bashing mangle wurzels or doing something equally exciting on her farm. But 
The cocky impaler was strutting his stuff like a gigolo in an American cocktail bar full of fat, rich women. How about it, girls? said Jess, and we crowed our solidarity. It was game on from the word go. Squeals and high heels pounded the vodka yard. Feathers flew. Jess lost her hairpiece. Another girl lost a Jimmy Choo wedge in a crater of dung. The third fell on her bottom and split her linen shift to pelvic floor. We laddered tights and sweated buckets, but we got our man, as well as heartburn, from too much exertion on top of a hefty lunch. We shoved Vlad into an empty wheat sack and gave him to Jess, who had a friend in the city keen for a pedigree rooster to mate with her gorgeous gels. Vlad was set to become a metro male, and we joined the criminal classes. I couldn't have felt better. Troll Vodka was very distressed. She came over to my side of the fence a couple of days later, prostrate with grief, wailing about the unfairness of it all, of losing her baby. It turned out she'd hand-raised Vlad from a chick. Hot water bottles, special chick crumbs, lots of loving and attention. I felt a heel but not enough to cut off my foot and confess. Instead, I clucked my concern, made sweet tea, and bemoaned the creation of the wicked fox who must have slain poor Vlad in his prime, and secretly, gleefully, looked forward to endless, peaceful nights. A few days later on, and I ran into Jess at the post office. Bursting with news, she told me her city chum had rung to say she'd sold the bird. Someone had happened to see Vlad in her garden and had offered her an exorbitant sum to buy him, as they'd been searching high and low for a Russian all-off cock. The breed appeared to be as rare as hen's teeth. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, we were in the black. Who'd have thought we'd make money from our crime? We high-fived and squawked our success. I pulled into my driveway, feeling smug, only to be met by the troll. She sported an equally smug smile, which wasn't pretty. In her broken English, she told me she'd found a replacement bought at great cost from the city wasn't it wonderful i wasn't sure what she'd got but i wished her well all the same remnants of guilt making me profuse i wish i hadn't bothered because early too early the next morning the sound barrier was compromised the airways shattered my windows rattled siskin squealed and shot under the bed whimpering my heart slammed against my ribs vlad was back the end thanks so much for listening we'd love to get your feedback and and we'd love to reach more listeners Our website is sistersincrime.org.au and our email address is admin at sistersincrime.org.au. Until next Friday then, when we bring you another scintillating story from Australian women crime creatives.